Okay, so let's go back to the layout here, and let's uh, let's sex this up a little bit. So I've got, see, that's going to be my main camera. Let's rearrange things a little bit. Let's do let's do a crop. I'm going to do this. Uh, let's do this a little bit bigger, kind of kind of biggish like so. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to enable cropping, and let's do a crop of this. And I told you that that lamp was going to be an important featured part of the show. So we're going to just crop in on the lamp there. So I'm basically doing a punch in on this shot. Now there's some. I will admit, this part of the UI is a little bit weird. Uh, the placement percentages, it's basically the percentage of free space. If I wanted to say 10% free space at the top, I would do that. If you disable that, then it goes back up to the top. And it's, it's, it's a little weird, but you can figure it out. Um, so I got that up there. And then let's actually make this a little bit smaller here. Let's shrink this down a little bit like so. Take this interface. The fact that it goes uh, transparent, semi-transparent, as I'm moving it around is just to help with placement. So I can get this in here. Make that interface, or make that uh, layout look the way I want it. Come here, you. Come here, just down. Oops, got to zero that out. There we go. Um, I told you it's a little bit funky. Oh, it's this. That's what's getting me. There we go. It can be a little bit funky sometimes trying to get this thing exactly right, but it is still so much easier than what I'm used to dealing with with my ATEM. Okay, there we go. So there's my two layouts side by side. I got my split view going on in there. Now let's put a graphic up here. So I go and add another new item, and I'm going to choose picture. Now, picture, I have, I do actually have a picture still uploaded here. So the picture I uploaded earlier, I'll show you where to do that in a moment. I can select that picture. You can see it was the graphic from this morning's show. I can place that wherever I want to on here. And I've now successfully covered my video, which is not what I wanted. So let's go over here and rearrange the layering of that, put that on the background there, and away we go. So there I've built this clearly fantastic layout. This is a winner right here. Save that layout. And now if we go back to the overhead view, you'll see that there is that layout. So there's my camera one. So there's camera one, so we can view that. There's camera one. Go back to the layout here. There's camera two ready to go. And there's camera two loaded up. And then here's my split view. Apply that, and there is the split view that I just created. That is the program that would be out right now. So multiple cameras all at once on there, along with the titling across the top. It's that straightforward. Very, very easy to set up. That set up, at that point, that's really, that's it, right? I've got all these cool shows set up and ready to go. I see someone asking about inputs. It has three video inputs. It's two HDMI and one SDI. Let's do a quick little close-up on that again. There you go. Uh, there's your two HDMI inputs and the SDI input. And then there's the audio input separately as well for someone who was just asking the question there. Um, Daniel's also asking, could the inputs be in 4K? No, this is an HD device. If you want to do 4K, then you move up to the Pearl 2. The Pearl 2 is the big brother to this, which is fully 4K capable. Okay, um, all right, so there's basic layout. So let's go back into this, and I'm actually gonna, well, we'll leave that split layout. It's hideous, but we'll leave it in there. Um, and I don't think there's anything else in here I really needed to show you. Oh, you can add text. It's pretty basic, let's do this. Let me, let me get rid of the background in there. Let's say I wanted to put my own text up here. Let's add a new item, and we'll put a text layer in. And this is the cool thing about the text layer. You can actually do uh, short codes in here to bring up certain pieces of text. So if I hit this, and I'll say like today's date or year, month, day, week, time. It's basically time, date, and then a channel time. So I could say something in here like, uh, welcome, welcome, I can spell welcome, wow, to today's show. It's, and then what's the date? Um, it is, let's do percent F, we'll bring up the date, um, at, and then the time is percent T. So it's, it's today's date at time. I can choose a font for that if I want to choose a different font. And then there you go. This will be updating there in real time. It's not going to be really pretty text. It's basically aliased text on there. But you can see if we look at the, uh, at the overhead, there's our thing. So if you want to have that on there, you can if you want to do that sort of thing. Uh, someone's asking about motion graphics and titles. Motion graphics, no. It does not support bringing in animations or, um, or any, well, any movie files or animated files but it does support graphics. So as we saw earlier, we brought in the title card. I could create a whole layout that was just a title card. So hey, let's do that, let's do that. Let's do one, open new layout. Nope, I do layout. Didn't mean to do two of them. And we're gonna call this uh, um, opening graphic. And then for that layout, let's activate that. I'll go down here and add new item. It's gonna be a picture. And I've got this picture already selected, so I'll put that in. To add more pictures to this, let me save that. Oh, and I could have no audio at this point, or here's an idea. I could have, there's a uh, RCA audio, right? I could enable that, and then going back over here to the audio inputs, it is right over that little guy right there, or using the RCA inputs, I could do what I actually, what is exactly the thing that I do for this show. 
I could have an iPod, it's just an old ancient iPod that's on an infinite loop playing a playlist that is plugged into my mixer at all times. And so for the opening graphic, I would just load up, I would go in here and load up the, oh, I haven't saved that yet. Let me hit save over here on the computer. Um, I just hit save, there we go. I would have this opening graphic that would be playing and I could have music coming in on there. And so that would be my kind of opening and ready to go. And then when I'm ready to go live, I would say, right, it's time to go live, three, two, one, apply, and suddenly that channel is on the air. So that's how you do that. Now to add graphics into it, let's take a look at that. Go to the media tab, and this is where you go and upload files. You got two and a half gigs of internal storage. So you can store tons and tons of pictures. You just choose a file, hit upload, and there's the one that I did earlier. So that's where that goes. So no, you cannot add video files to this. This is only supporting still files. That is a question that I've asked before. It is a feature that I, I am very much hoping gets added because there is clearly the CPU power in this thing to run it, uh, but it's not there right now. So fingers crossed, and I would say, ask Epifan. That's a great feature to keep on asking for. This is a computer, so it can get software updates, firmware updates, which it gets regularly. I mean, regularly, you know, it gets them when needed, but there is no reason that new features cannot be added, and that is a feature that I would definitely be knocking at the door saying, come on, guys, this is something we really want, because I know for me, I think that would be awesome. Okay, so that's where the media gets uploaded. All right, so back to our YouTube channel. So, so far, we have, this is our YouTube channel here, under layouts, we have set up these layouts, and that, that's it, that's all we've done in here. So now let's get into actually getting this thing on the air. The next setup is encoding. Now this is the part where you gotta get everything just right. You have to punch in the right numbers to go to YouTube, to go to Twitch, to go to Facebook, whatever it may be, or it's not gonna be right. You're, you're gonna get dropped frames, you're gonna get failed streams, you're gonna get lower quality than you should. There, if you basically don't match it, if you try, try to send too much data, it's not like Facebook goes, oh, okay, we, just, we only need part of that. It goes, ah, can't handle it, and it shuts down. If you don't give it enough data, then you get a really crappy stream quality. So you, you gotta get these numbers right. I have linked in the description down below to the three pages on YouTube's, Facebook's, and Twitch's support pages that tell you exactly what settings you need for any given uh, any, any given output bandwidth. So if you want to do a 1080p show, you want to do a 720p show, you want to do a 30 frame, 60 frame, whatever it is, all of that data is there. I'm setting this up as a 1080p 30 right now. So let's take a look. I have, I'm actually here, give me just a minute. I'm going to pull this off screen and set this up without you looking at my screen and pull up that page that I have linked down below already for you. And let me get this in place. And here we go. All right, so this is the YouTube page. There's all the data about YouTube. This is the page that's linked down below. You choose what you're gonna encode at. I'm gonna encode at 1080p. So it tells you resolution and the video bit rate. So you've got a range of three to six megabit, very important. And then the encoder settings down below that. Now it's not like this is gonna be in the exact same layout as this, and it's not like you're even gonna find the exact name. So sometimes, you know, you got a little bit of sleuthing here. But for YouTube specifically, let's just get this set up. So codec is gonna be H.264. The other option is motion JPEG, no thanks, H.264. Video encoding preset, hardware, software. Definitely hardware. I don't actually know why you wanna go software. I don't know, but hardware accelerated, that's what this box does, so we do it. Video encoding profile is high. That is actually not listed in here, but I figured that out somewhere along the way. The default there for YouTube is high. You can choose this, use current signal as resolution as frame size. However, if you've got mixed resolutions, I would recommend disabling that and then punching it in manually. And you can see there's presets in here you can choose. Um, we're gonna go with 1920 by 1080 manually. Okay, here's the first thing we gotta look up. Keyframe interval, what should it be? If we look through here on the settings on the YouTube side, it will tell us somewhere in here, it says keyframes. There we go, keyframe frequency, recommended two seconds, do not exceed four. So we're gonna go with the recommended of two seconds. Limit the frame rate. The frame rate is gonna be the same as what I'm putting out. So I'm gonna do a 30p show, so I'm gonna leave it at 30p, that's fine. You don't have to punch in 29.97, you can just leave it at 30 and 30 is 30. And then bit rate, don't do auto, don't do auto, do manual. Go out here and find the bit rate, what did I say it was? For this setup, it's a recommended of three to six. This is going to depend on a couple of things. If you're, forget about the pearl for a second, the bit rate that you can encode at is gonna be largely dependent on the quality of hardware that you have. This thing, the Pearl, is specced, I believe, up to 50 megabit. Obviously, that's not for pushing to YouTube. That would be pushing out to your own server, maybe doing a stream over LAN. Um, then you might wanna go that high. But in this case, bit rate is really gonna be determined by your bandwidth. What can you upload? The show that you're watching right now is being encoded on a Pearl 2, so the big brother to this, and is being encoded at 16 megabit. We're pushing out a 16 megabit file because I have the bandwidth here in the studio to do that. This right here, um, and 
I'm sorry, I just lied to you. I said 66. Six megabit file. I think 16 was my 4K setup. Six megabit file because that is what this, uh, this will support. I can do six megabit. I got the bandwidth for it. So that's what I would do here as well. So let me just go back into this. Um, I'm going to go for the max, and I'm going to say 6,000 kilobits, 6 megabit, and there we go. Audio settings, equally important to get this right. Enabled, obviously I want this to be enabled. Audio format, you've got AAC at a variety of uh, frequencies, uh, not frequencies, what do they call those, um, whatever, kilohertzes. So we're going to go and choose, find out here. Audio sample rate, that's the word I was looking for. Sample rate is 44.1, so we go 44. I don't know why it doesn't actually say 44.1, but it is. And audio channels, I do want stereo audio. And the bit rate, what does it say here? Audio bit rate is 128. So I choose this to 128. Hit apply. And this is now set up ideally for streaming to YouTube. Again, very important to get that right. The settings for YouTube and Twitch and Facebook are all different. Twitch and YouTube are quite close, um, but they're not identical. And YouTube is totally different. YouTube's different because it's 720p. But there you go. It is what it is. So, um, oh, and Epifan Video is in the house. Excellent. Thank you very much, Epifan Video, for tuning in today. That is fantastic. So if you're watching live, and if you have questions, comments, requests for Epifan directly, make sure you type at Epifan in the chat so it shows up and they know that you've got a question for them. I'm sure they'll be reading all the comments anyway, but that would be fantastic. Thank you guys for tuning in today. I really appreciate that. They're also going to tell me if I'm doing anything wrong. Make sure you type at Photo Joseph so I see it. And everybody else does too. <laughs> no, I think we got this right. Okay, so that is the encoding settings. Um, next tab, so we don't need this anymore. Let's, uh, can I, I can't do that. Let's just uh, let's get rid of this. We are done with that. Okay. Uh, next tab is metadata. You can type in, you know, your name, your copyright info in here. I don't, I haven't seen this data show up anywhere, so I'm not sure if YouTube, if it's just embedded in the file. I haven't seen where it gets extracted by YouTube anywhere, but it can't hurt to add it. So you may as well just add your info in there. Why not? Um, I'm sure there are services that do extract it directly, and so that could be beneficial to your stream. I've never seen it being used, but I have it filled in on mine because you know, why not? It can't hurt. It's just metadata. Streaming. Oop, not recording. Streaming. Here is where we set up our actual streaming setup for YouTube. So this is going to be YouTube. We're going to call it YouTube. That's fine. We'll call it YouTube 1080p just to make sure we're clear. And we do new stream. What stream you choose is going to depend on where you're pushing this to. In this case, my CDN, my content delivery network, is YouTube, which means I'm going to choose an RTMP push. And now I have to enter the URL and the stream name. So I'm going to my live events scheduled page on YouTube. So here's the current show. If I want to create a new event, let's, uh, let's make this a little bit smaller here so we can see what's going on. If I want to create a new event, I go to new live events. This is under your dashboard to go to events. I click new live event. Let's make this a little bigger as well. Give it a name, we're just gonna call this test. Test, you give it a time that you're gonna go live. You need to, you need to, I'm gonna actually leave this as unlisted. Well, yeah, we'll leave it unlisted. Um, you need to enable this. You need to go to custom, not quick. The first time you do this, it's probably gonna be set to quick. Go to custom for what we want. Once you set it there, it's sticky, it doesn't change. And you can go to advanced settings. You can set things up in here like your live chat when you want it to be promoted. I don't want this to be promoted because it's not a real show. Um, you can, this is kind of cool. I do this all the time. You can automatically make your show unlisted as soon as it's done. So it's archived. You can disable comments on that show once it's published or once it's, well, not published in case anybody finds it. And you can choose between normal, low, or ultra low latency. You have, one of the drawbacks of ultra low latency is that people cannot back up. There's, you lose the DVR option, which means that like this show that you're watching right now live, if you're watching it live, I am at the ultra low latency. The benefit is I see your chat, your chat, let me rephrase that. What you're seeing is closest to real time of all of them. So when you're chatting, you're chatting on something that just happened a few seconds ago, not something that happened a minute ago. Um, but you cannot back up. You don't have a DVR option on your playback. But I'm okay with that. So that's the option that you have in there. Uh, so you set your settings the way you want it, create the event, and then give that a moment. This takes a, little, a couple moments to do. Once this is created, it's going to give you the URL and the key. These are the critical components for getting your show from here, your program from here out to that actual show. Uh, still thinking about it. So this take, it takes you know, half a minute or so for that to generate. And the really cool thing about the key is that you can have what's called a persistent key so that you're broadcasting to the same channel every time. And you could have multiple shows that look at the same channel, just not simultaneously. But you can, so this way you do not have to set up a new key every time. So this is how that'll work. I'm not, I'm not gonna do the whole YouTube thing of how this set this up, but we're gonna show you briefly. Um, here we go. So I can choose where am I going to stream to. I can choose a single use key or a reusable key. If I hit reusable key, 
then we see this is my show that I've set up. Now I'm not going to open it because then you'll see my key and I would have to change it. But this is my show that I stream to every day. However, today we're going to set up a new show. So I go single use key. It thinks about it and it generates it. And there's the info that I need. There's the stream name and there's the URL. Stream name, stream key, same thing. So I would just copy this primary URL, paste this in over here to URL, go back here and grab the stream name, pass this, paste the stream name into there, click apply, and that's it. This is now everything. I am now 100% ready to go online. I hit start right there, and what is coming out of this camera is streaming to the internet. Now this, we, it's taken a while for us to get to here because obviously I've been talking a lot through this, but that is the extent of what you need to go online. Plug in your camera, even if you're starting, let's say you're starting completely from scratch, you've just taken this out of the box. Your HDMI A and B are already set up. So you just plug in a camera into HDMI A, it's got your video and audio. You go into the encoding settings and you set it up as needed for YouTube. And then you go into the streaming settings and you build your show as we just did. Hit stream and you're on the air. That's all there is to it. Clearly you can do more than that, but that is all that it really takes to get yourself on the air to get yourself live. Um, at this point, like I said, I'm ready to go. So let's take a look at some of the other settings we have in here. Um, I can add multiple streams. So if I wanted to stream, let's just say that Twitch was identical to YouTube or close enough. And you know what? It may actually be close enough. I am going to be running some tests because just to see what the tolerances are. Uh, but the advantage of doing, if the advantage of having something that is close enough or identical is that I can set up multiple streams from the same channel right here. So without having to change anything else, I can go in and say, you know, we're also going to stream to... Twitch. So that would be called Twitch. I know I misspelled that. This would be my YouTube one, and we'll call this YouTube plus Twitch. And this would become my simultaneously, spell it right. I'm really good at that. Twitch, there we go. This would be my simultaneous stream to both channels, and I would punch in the same data there. Now I would be streaming to two places simultaneously from this one channel, which is pretty neat. But let's just delete that stream. Okay, so now I said that if it was the same, because you notice here we have, we can stream out to multiple locations, but the encoding is one encoding setting, right? This is the encoding setting, 1920 by 1080, six megabit, this audio setup. If I wanted to simultaneously push this out to Facebook, I can't do that from here because Facebook needs 720p. Okay, well, we can set up a different channel, right? Totally. So we, we could do is we could go into here and add a new channel. Actually, before, don't even have to add a new channel. I could go up here, I could say YouTube plus Twitch, let's go back to this one, go back to the status of this, and I could duplicate this channel, right? So now I'd have two identical channels. That's great. I got two identical channels and I can set one to go to Facebook and one to go to YouTube. Bonus. But there's a problem. See, the switching that I'd be doing from channel one, the one that's going to YouTube, I would have to simultaneously somehow at the same time be switching it up for the Facebook channel. So that's not going to work. I can't just duplicate it. So what I'm going to do instead is create a new channel and as the source of that channel, instead of saying this camera and this camera and that camera, I'm gonna say the source is my YouTube channel. So it takes everything that's all set up for YouTube and it loops it back into a second channel for Facebook. How cool is that? So I go in here and I say channel two, and we're gonna call this one, uh, we're gonna call it Facebook Mirror, because I can. And then I go do my layouts. And all I need is one layout in here. Let's see, I think I'm done with this now. Let's get rid of this page now. I go in here and I add new item. Add new item, video source. And instead of choosing a camera, there's my channel, YouTube and Twitch. I choose that channel and now there's that. Make sure my audio is also set to YouTube and Twitch. It enables that automatically. Hit save. And now I've got a mirror, an exact mirror. I can go into my encoding and I can set up whatever encoding I need for Facebook, which again is gonna be different. I can set up my streaming here for Facebook. I set up my streaming server, just like we do for YouTube. We set it up for Facebook and away we go. And so now we've got two, we've got one show going to multiple places all at the same time and they're identical. I don't have to worry about, oh my God, I have to switch to two different things at once. Pretty, pretty cool. So uh, let's go back to this interface, go back to the top down on here. And you'll see now that I've set up two channels, if I go back to here, there's YouTube and Switch, and there's my Facebook mirror. And so they are the same thing, and they are, you can see, almost exactly in sync with each other. The, the Facebook mirror one's gonna be, what, like a, a handful of frames behind it. If I go and I switch it, so oops, let's not do that. If I go into the YouTube and Switch, let's change channels. Let's say I go to this split screen there, um, apply that, and I go back to this layout, we see that Facebook is in fact getting the same thing. So no matter what I do here, it shows up over here automatically. So I don't have to go switching both, which is, in itself pretty remarkable. 
Um, I am going to, I am because this is such an extensive show, I'm actually going to go back through the questions real quick and see if there's anything I missed. We're not going to do a separate Q&A afterwards. We're going to put this all together into one. Um, so with that said, I, haven't, I didn't tell you guys that before. So those of you watching live, if you have questions about the show today, we're going to do this in line in real time. So go ahead and drop your questions in the show. Make sure you type at Photo Joseph in front of it. As Burns did here earlier, if you put at Photo Joseph in front of it, I see it in red on my screen, so I know that you've got a question. Please do that. Answer, ask her any questions you like. And remember that um, Epifan themselves are here in the chat room today. So there's a lot of conversations going on here. None of these have red lines in front of them, red, red things with my name on it, so I'm not going to try and address those. But if you've posted a question to me, and you didn't put my name in front of it, post it again, and I will come back to it. That's the end of part two. Part three is next. And remember, if you have gained value from today's show, please consider putting value back in. Head over to photojoseph.com support and see how you can help support the show. Next, part three.